Hi, I'm Alex, and today I wanted to show you something that I created in Google Collaboratory that I think can be really useful for professionals who are trying to maximize their time. And this tool is an audiobook generator. Now, I pay $10 a month for Google Collaboratory Pro, which gives me access to better resources than are available on the free version. Um, it allows for runtimes that have more resources over here. You can see I have 53 gigabytes of RAM and 22 gigabytes of GPU RAM. Now, this is a limit that I get each month, about 300 compute units. And I usually don't use all of those compute units. This can be used for lots of different things that you might be wanting to do with machine learning and AI. But for professionals, it's more interesting if we can find a practical use for this kind of service. Recently, I've been trying to upskill like all of us, and that can involve a lot of random PDFs and documentation that you might want to read. Now, we all might prefer to listen to some of this documentation instead of reading it, because if we're listening to it, um, a, there's a little less willpower, we can let it wash over us, and B, we can be doing other things to occupy our hands and our, you know, minds like the dishes or cleaning or laundry, etc. Or we can wa be walking outside. Um, so there's a lot more options when you can convert some documentation into an audiobook. So recently, uh, in machine learning and AI, one of the things that has taken off is um, text to speech generation. So we're going to look at a library today called Koki TTS. Um, so the first thing we're doing in this notebook is we're just installing TTS. Pip install TTS. And this exclamation mark says we're running this as a bash command instead of running it as Python code. So what happens here is that installs and then we're installing a specific version of NumPy because TTS gets upset when you have the wrong versions of certain things. After running both of these, I had to restart the session. Um, that didn't seem to cause any issues. After that, we can start using TTS. Here, we're still using it as its command line interface. So this exclamation mark says, TTS dash dash list models, and it's showing us all of the different models available through basic TTS. These models are all different types of text to speech models, and they work for different languages. All of the ones here that say EN work for English. Uh, and apparently, this LJ speech is the vocoder, and then this is the model name. So some of these are for other languages. And some of them are multilingual. So the one that we're looking at today is actually just called Jenny Jenny because it produces speech pretty quickly, but it also is pretty good quality, as in I could theoretically listen to it for a while. So once we've seen, a, but, but this whole list, you can, you can switch out, you can experiment, you can use other languages. So that's why it's included in this little tutorial. Um, after that, we just have a really basic example. In Python, we're importing TTS, and then we are initializing a TTS object with the Jenny Jenny model. And then we're, we're picking some text and here we're trying another model and so here we can generate our file with the second one and we're taking the my text and we're creating an output file and it won't take too long because it's just a little bit of text and then we can listen to that output file um, but that's just an example What's actually cooler is, let's say we have a whole PDF. Now, right now, the way that this is configured is to work through your Google Drive. So what I've done is 
uh, mounted my Google Drive over here using Google Collaboratory, and now it's in this Drive drop down here. So I can, and I've, I've set things up to use a TTS new folder inside of it. So yesterday I generated these 100 and something clips of an 80 page AWS overview PDF. And the way that I did that is that I got the, um, PDF. And then I opened it up and I copied out all the text into a text file. And I really found the easiest way to do that was to do it manually. And then I uploaded those to my Google Drive. Uh, so here's the, the PDF file. And basically just control A to select all and copied all of this out. And then I uploaded it as this text file right here. Or I opened it in Google Docs and copied it that way. And then I had a text file with all of that information about AWS. And I wanted to turn this into an audiobook. So for small tasks like this, I asked ChatGPT to help me come up with some code. And what this code does is it basically just creates a bunch of audio files, like an album of an audiobook for that, and it saves it into your Google Drive automatically. Right down here, we have the file name. This is just an example with using a shorter version of that. We have an index file. This is useful because it helps you keep track of how much of the text you've processed so far. This job can take a few hours. So if it crashes, this will let you recover. And then the output directory where you're going to save these. And we're saving it into the TTS new inside of our Google Drive. Once we have that, we can just start running it. And it's going to create audio files for us. Now it has already generated these audio files for me. So we can just go take a look at them. Let's see. Now I'm back in my Google Drive. And I'm going to look at things as folders. In TTS new, I have two clips. Let's listen to one. Amazon Athena. Amazon Athena is an interactive query service that makes it easy to analyze data in Amazon's using standard SQL. Athena is serverless, so there is no infrastructure sorry, to manage, and you pay only for the queries that you run. Athena is easy to use. Simply point to your data in Amazon's Define the Schema and start querying using standard SQL. Most results are delivered within seconds. With Athena, there's no need for complex extract, transform, and no detail. By running this for several hours over the course of a day, or over the course of the night, you can create a really large audio book for really large PDFs that you might need to otherwise read manually. These can be important uh, papers that were just released. These could be court opinions if you're more legally minded. Um, this lets you really cheaply um, for like $10 a month create basically as many professional audiobooks as you might want in order to upscale and ingest new information. So if you're interested in this tool, please reach out and you should be able to find links to it in the description of this video as well. Thanks so much.